How's it going? Today we're going to be tying a hare's ear dial back. The hook I have in the vise is a Camazan B160. Short shank hook. And the thread I'll be using is UTC70 in tan colour. So we catch on just behind the eye. And we whip on for about 4 or 5 mil. Trim off her tag end and bring her thread back up to the eye. For the throat haggle, I'm going to be using a light down, light grey down neck haggle. I pull off one of the haggles from down near the end, one of the big haggles that aren't really much used for dries. And you want to peel off about, pinch off about a dozen or so fibres. Now to tie them in, they're going to be tied down on the underside of the shank, and I find it a lot easier if you can, if you've got a rotary vise, turn the hook upside down. You take your fibres, roughly measure the length of the shank, pinch them with your thumb and forefinger, and make a couple of turns. At this stage they're loose enough that if they're lying, if they're lopsided, tied sort of to one side of the shank, you can manoeuvre them around to where you want them. A couple more turns just to secure them in. And trim off any excess. Okay. Take your thread down the shank to roughly where the the bend starts. This is where we tie the tail and again we use the same haggle. Light grey right on, taking off, pinching off a dozen or so fibres, checking the ends all line up and much the same as the throat haggle you're going for roughly the length of the shank. Tie them in with three or four loose turns and just check they're, they're sitting right sitting nice on top of the shank and you bring them up to roughly halfway up the shank I like to finish my throat haggled about halfway down the shank and then meet it with the tail this keeps the body reasonably smooth when you're tying it Now for the rib, we're going to be using cold wire from hens. So you pull off about three or four inches and catch it in a couple of mil behind the eye. Again, taking it the whole way down the body. This helps to keep the body smooth and uniform. It makes it easier for bringing your dubbin up over the top. For the dubbin, I'm going to be using this hair's ear dubbin, or hair dubbin from Hens. It's, it's a nice blend, there's quite a lot of under fur in it which makes it very easy to bite under the thread. You make yourself a dubbin rope, you want about 2 inches or so of five, 2 inches or so dubbed under the the thread and we're also going to add a flashback to this nymph. For the flashback we're going to be using opal tinsel and medium. We'll pull off about two or three inches. And we rest that on top of her on top of her body. Catching it in with three or four turns, make sure it's sitting over the top of the shank. I have the have the dubbin already on my thread, so I just want to pull it back about an inch or so and that'll give me enough thread to tighten this, tighten the flashback down. Pull it back a wee bit more. Bring it back down to 
where the tail starts. There we go, now we're ready for our body. So nice tight turns, bringing the dubbing the whole way up. about a mill or so just behind the eye, maybe a little bit of extra dubbing on there so we'll just tease that back off. So now we take our flashback over the top. You want to catch it in behind the eye with a few turns. Making sure again you're happy with the way it's sitting over the shank few more turns just to lock it in. Then we trim this off. Now for the rib, because there's quite a big step between the shank and the dub body, your first turn goes right behind the body and that will help you step up on. And then reasonably tight turns coming up the body just getting slightly wider turns as you're moving up to your eye. Catch this in with half a dozen or so turns. And then rather than trim the thread off with your scissors or trim the, the wire rib off with your scissors, which is hard on scissors, I like to just worry it off, wiggle it about a bit, and it should snap. Now, to get our throat fibres pulled back, you just thumb and forefinger and gently tease them back. Make a couple of turns. You can see there, some of them are back and I've still got a few forward. So all you do, again, same thing. Tease them back. Get another couple of turns in. And just keep doing this until all your fibres are back behind the thread. It just leaves us to whip finish now. Take our whip finish tool and about seven or eight turns. Trim our tag off. A bit of varnish. Here you have a hare's ear dial back. It's a very good pattern when the fish are nymphing just below the surface. I think it, it can represent a freshwater shrimp quite well or in the very small sizes canis nymphs. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it.